Hovey's Knives of China Cabbage and Duck Chopper, William Hovey Smith, 2016. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Honey, and we do outdoor cooking, and here are some interesting knives of my own design. This is Hovey Smith with Hovey's Knives of China, and today I will introduce the third of our new cooking knives that are based on ancient patterns. Two on the table before me, the small one is the bok choy, which I have a previous video about, and this is for cutting medium-sized vegetables. This large imposing blade here is the largest of the series of knives that we will actually produce. This by any standard is a large knife, and what it is particularly designed to do is to cut things like cabbage and also duck. In China, duck is as common as chicken is in the United States and in historic times was even more so. The duck is served chopped into very small pieces commonly in stews and what we might call a barbecue and in many other soups. And a knife like this, originally made in bronze, was used to dice up the ducks, bones and all. Chomp, 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 chomp! Yeah! If you were in an ancient Chinese kitchen, and you were in there during the preparation of a meal, you would hear the sound of a lot of chopping. And this would be as these ducks, as well as vegetables, were being prepared, some of which with huge knives like this, as I say, originally made in bronze. When made in bronze, this style of knife had a problem. Bronze tends to embrittle, and particularly on this join right here. You could not make a cleaver out of bronze and impact it on something without this ultimately failing right here. With steel, this does not occur. And so hence, we're now introducing this knife made of steel rather than bronze. Now, how did they use it? Since it wouldn't stand the direct impact of chopping, as in a cleaver, chomp, 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 they used the pressure of the hand and the long length of the knife and the leverage to cut big vegetables like cabbage. In short, they used it like this. So you would put the knife down, hopefully on a table or some surface, and then you would go down and you would cut like that. And that cleanly cuts your cabbage. Then you would quarter, like yay. Now this has a stem on it already, so this will be a little tougher. So we cut right across the stem. Then we can cut this off, chomp, and this, chomp. Now this knife's work is now done. We are finished with it. We will use a smaller knife here, which is more convenient for the fine dicing of the cabbage. And we are going to make a coleslaw. Now when I do a coleslaw, I do it a little bit differently than other folks. Uh, I have pistachio nuts here. I have some fresh crushed peppers. I have raisins, relish, mayonnaise, and salt. And these are the ingredients that go in my coleslaws. So we're going to proceed to prepare some of these, and I will bring up the camera so you'll be able to actually view the cutting. Like in most cooking situations, I have limited working room, which is not unusual in any kitchen. So I'm moving a few things out of the way here to give myself some room for these knives to actually work. So this is, as I mentioned, the bok choy. Uh, this is a uh, medium sized handle compared to this handle, which is large. Now we at Hovey's Knives, 
make our handles to suit the customer. Uh, I happen to have a medium sized hand so this handle fits me. This distinctive round ring is designed to fit in the palm here. But a large guy who has always got along with tiny knives that never really felt good. Now this will fit him. Yeah, without any problem. So this is a man's knife for a man-sized man to do a man's work. This is a serious blade. Now, for us of more regular size, uh, a knife like this is about right. So you can take your knife and then you proceed your slicing and making your, making your cabbage. Now no one nowadays in a kitchen slices cabbage like this. Why not? Obviously it takes too long. And you can buy your cabbage already processed. And so you just buy your pre-processed cabbage and then you make your coleslaw. However, in a home kitchen, it's quite different. Home cooks who really want to make food, instead of just putting out hundreds of plates of products a night, yes, they enjoy using original tools. They enjoy going through the processing steps themselves rather than buying the pre-processed stuff. Of course it's simpler and it's faster if you have to. But to really produce a dish of character and of quality, yes, you want to do it for your guest, and you want to do it yourself, and you want to do it right. So this is why I'm selling such knives, to enable people to do exactly that, to enjoy the cooking experience, to use some interesting tools, to recapture a bit of the past. You never know what you might discover when you use an ancient tool that perhaps hasn't been seen for 2,000 years. You can develop some new techniques. This particular point has some special uses for cutting dough and outlining a tracery or something like that in pressed meat, and gives a quality to the knife. Now because each of these signature knives is custom made, they are made for the individual. This knife, for example, is also offered in a truncated point, like this. Because this point is intrinsically dangerous. If it falls off a table, it will go through any boot or shoe ever made. Guaranteed. With a truncated point, you have almost the full utility of a sharp point, but without that danger. I have another pattern of knife, which I have introduced in a previous video, the small veggie and pepper knife, which has a truncated point as a regular feature. It also has a different grind of blade. Now this blade is ground on both sides, like this. The pepper knife is flat on this surface right here, and is ground only on this side. So that gives a very, very straight cut. And it actually makes cutting something like a cabbage, like this, much easier because your knife doesn't tend to scoot off like this as you cut. When you're cutting cabbage like this, you have to actually put a little sideways pressure like this to keep the knife straight. With a knife with a straight back, you do not have to do that. So we'll proceed to chop up this some more. Now you can see what I'm speaking of, perhaps, the knife is wanting to slide a little bit. Okay. Now, we get some larger pieces down here, which we want to take care of. So we just take the knife and go very simply like this. Now that things are down on a flatter surface, yeah, this whole knife works very, very easy. And the flat plane of the blade Striking against a flat cutting board gets you a nice even chop all the way through.
So this is a very effective knife for home cooking and home use. In another video, I use this knife to do a stir fry and actually use it and to cut up meat and produce a stir fry on a metal sheet. And that's a technique I call sheet iron cooking. And this was a part of a seminar I did at the Charlie Elliott Wildlife Center in Mansfield, Georgia. And incidentally, I also have a Kickstarter project which features this knife in action that you can contribute to so we can continue to offer these very valuable seminars to would-be outdoor writers. I charge only $50 for the seminar, so obviously I'm not making any money at it, but have to do something to actually defray more of the expenses or erstwise I can't continue to do the seminar. So, okay. Now that's getting about right. Now this is a chopped cabbage rather than a shredded cabbage. And you'll notice, yeah, it does look a little different. Hmm. And it will feel different in the mouth. And when we make our coleslaw, yeah, this is going to be a quite different experience. Just for the sake of comparison, I want to use this larger knife and see if the chopping goes faster or more efficiently than it did with a smaller one here. And uh, yeah, as you will see, it does. Even though this has a thicker blade. You get more leverage. You can see how it wants to slide off the side there. So with this grind, you really have to hold the knife at a little bit of an angle to get a nice clean cut. It wants to pull off. Like yay. So plus this has is made of slightly thicker steel. But once you get down to the nitty-gritty of chopping, the longer blade and the heavier blade seems to do faster. It certainly takes more energy to operate. And you're putting more work actually into the cabbage. What if you get a single little piece that you want to slice? Okay, do it just like that. Woof. Cuts it very, very cleanly just like this paper. So now, we have only one more quarter to do, and we'll be ready to do our coleslaw. I have finished up the cabbage chopping, and having used both knives, for me personally, I find this one more efficient and takes less energy for me to work than the larger knife. However, if you are a large guy, and you have big hands, and you are sick and tired of using this little, small, effete kind of cooking implementaria that feels to you like, well, like working with a child's tea set. Well, yeah, we got some blades for you guys. Yeah, we do. We have some that'll feel good in the hands that suits you so far as size goes that will actually do the work very well. Now, this again has a double ground blade. For this cabbage chopping per se, the single grind blade would actually be more efficient because it tends to wander off less as you cut. Now, if you were chopping duck, however, yeah, you would want this edge that has more of a chisel point or a chisel shape. So you can actually get real energy, chomp, 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 down to break through bones and a carcass. So now we'll put this together and start making the coleslaw.
I find in doing custom cooking that there is a distinct difference in likes if you're serving a bunch of guys and if you're serving a bunch of gals. In general, women want their food diced finer, whereas guys want it in larger chunks. Now, uh, this is a piece of cabbage, as I say, that didn't quite get all the way cut. So, slop, 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 cut. Very simple. These are pistachio nuts that, of course, have been shelled. And we are going to put these pistachio nuts in our coleslaw. This is an unusual addition. It's not usually done in southern recipes. And this is more something that one would find, oh, perhaps in the Middle East. But I find these very, very good in coleslaw. So I break the nuts. I don't want to break them into powder, but I do want them in smaller fragments than individual nuts. And this goes along with the general mouth feel of this dish when it's finished. This will actually have some tactile feel in the mouth. Uh, I got teeth. Yeah! Yeah, yeah, I still do, 72, and I like to use them. When I eat food, yeah, I want to crunch something. So this satisfies that urge. Now my small veggie knife would have also done this, of course, function very, very well too. But this is about how I want it. Yep. Almost all of the nuts are broken. Not necessarily everyone, but almost all. And so this can go in. I don't want to reduce it to pistachio powder, however. And because this is a small workspace, I'm using a small cutting board. Coleslaws typically are just mayonnaise, cabbage, and a little salt. No, oh, that's quite simple, really. So these additions of nuts are adding some nutritional value to the dish. Yeah. Are making it not just like everybody else's coleslaw. Yeah. And I use comparatively a little mayonnaise. This is not going to be a soupy runny coleslaw. I, I, I very much dislike that kind of coleslaw. That's a lazy man's coleslaw. Okay. So, that's a good cup of pistachio nuts. Now, raisins. Where in the world did those come from? Well, in Mexico, in South America, they very commonly will use raisins or grapes in cooking. Much more so than we do in the U.S. or have ever even thought about. So I'm dicing these again just to give more of a distribution through the entire mix. These will give a slight sweetness to the coleslaw. The raisins, because they're somewhat sticky, gum up the blade. So you have to clean your blade every once in a while like this. Take very careful, however, that you don't slice your fingers in the process. These knives are sharp. They will do that. So we have our cup of raisins, about this.
this is coarse ground black pepper and so we're going to give a little black pepper to the mix again the general feeling of this is going to be that you get some crunch and some different flavors every time you set your teeth against something so we start mixing the dry ingredients here Now what else could you add in this? Well, if you wanted more interesting flavors, well you could add a pickled egg or two. Yeah, 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 you could do that. And add some, that would add some protein to the dish that even most non, well, even the vegetarians in your family could eat. Well, this is an all vegetable fruit nut mix to this point. So at this stage if you wished and you wanted to add some more flavors to the profile uh, you could add some pickled eggs or some straight boiled eggs either way. Work just fine. All right. Now this is a dry mix, of course, right now. We're going to add additional things for seasoning. This is pickle relish, sweet pickle relish. And I'm adding four tablespoons. And now we add the mayonnaise. I don't use a tremendous amount of mayonnaise in this. Just enough to sort of stick it together. So this is about four heaping tablespoons full. So we're going to see how this works. And if this does the job, that'll be enough. Otherwise, we'll add more. Because you don't want it too dry, but neither do you want it absolutely soupy and sloppy. Three spoons here. But you want mayonnaise covering each of your fragments of cabbage. That's your goal. scoop from the bottom and side so you're sure you get every part of it in the mix. Now this is coming out to be sort of an interesting looking coleslaw. Rather unlike the rather drab coleslaws that you usually have. Now you could put in other things too. Uh, for example, uh, you could put in some uh, all shredded carrots, for example, in here. You could put in some chopped onions in here. And make it your dish to your family's individual liking. Is there something I haven't thought of that you don't really like, that you want to add in your this coleslaw? Put it in there, test it out, see how it works. This is what home cooking is all about. Not slavishly following some great cooking guru's recipe, but using your own techniques and coming up with your own individual dishes. And there we have it. One dish of Hobie's Enhanced Coleslaw.
Well, how did our coleslaw do? Well, we're going to find out right quick. Mmm. That is good, chewy, interesting, uh, works well in the mouth. The taste, the flavors that you get from the coleslaw uh, come on in sort of waves as you crunch something. You get a hint of pistachio and then you get, get a hint of pickle and then you get the cabbage taste. And yeah, this is a very interesting coleslaw. Good. I almost wish I had a microphone in my mouth. Uh, that way you could hear the difference. I get a very little hint of pepper, which is desirable. Nothing is overpowering anything. I can taste every ingredient. It's not so slick with mayonnaise that uh, I only taste the mayonnaise. I get a little vinegar uh, from here, from these pickles, and that's good. Yeah, this is a fine product. All right, now about the knives. These are prototype knives. This is the first time they have been used. Uh, this one, anyway. Yeah, this is his first use. First time I've used it, and you've seen it. Uh, what about them? Well, I'm going to be introducing these knives at the Blade Show this year uh, in, at the Cobb Galleria in Atlanta. This is an international Blade Show, and I'll be at table U16. And hopefully I will have some blanks cut from stainless steel uh, with a water jet available for sale. Now, I don't intend to patent these knives. These are my knives, and anybody who looks at them will realize they're my knives. They are very, very distinctive indeed. What the distinctive features of these knives are is this common oval handle here. The fact that it has this scallop here on the front, and all my knives will feature this. Um, so these are very unusual blades, and anybody in the world can make them. I don't have any problems with that. This is open use material. If you're a bladesmith and you want to make a knife like this, that's just fine. As a matter of fact, cooperate with me. Now, shortly I will be registering a trademark for these knives, and I'll allow you to produce them under my license. And what I ask is 5%, whatever you sell them for. If you need to charge 500 bucks for your knife, fine. I get 5% of retail. And if your knives are decent, you send me one, and I will exhibit it and talk about it at my annual table at the Blade Show. Yeah. If you're a commercial outfit and you want to produce these knives commercially, it's exactly the same deal. Yep. You run them off in your machinery anywhere in the world. If they're decent knives, I'll allow you to use my trademark and 5% of retail price. So, uh, that's the deal about these knives. This will introduce a new set of knives, a brand new design, something that we haven't seen in the knife business for a while, not since World War II, really. Uh, such a proliferation of knives of different patterns from one maker. But, going back to ancient patterns, as I do, we have come up with some very unique cutting tubes. This is only two. I have more than 15 different designs, which we will talk more of. And they'll be introduced in videos like this. I will be having a, a website, which I haven't got up yet, but will show very, very shortly. And so you'll be able to see the progression of development. Uh, a simple way to follow is actually on Pinterest. Because every time I produce a video concerning these knives, uh, yeah, I'm going to post that on my own YouTube channel, as well as on Pinterest, under Hobie's Knives of China. 
So you can look under that posting on Pinterest and quickly look down and say, oh, 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 I like that one. Yeah. All right. And uh, that way you'll be able to see this great variety of stuff I'm going to be bringing out. Now, hopefully I will have at least half a dozen patterns at the plate shop. Maybe more, but at least half a dozen. So, for now, this is Hobie Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. I talk about knives in all of my outdoor books, including backyard deer hunting, extreme muzzle loading, crossbow hunting, and even in practical bow fishing, where I talk about a variety of knives and other interesting edged tools. Now, the cabbage knife is made of thicker stock, and only a few runs of these are going to be made every year, so there may be some delays in getting these. Now, for more information on my books, blogs, and more than 500 videos, you can go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye, and God bless.